What is happening YouTube? Cowboy here and welcome to the first build video of many for Monster Hunter World. And this is my light bow gun build, the Xeno Slicer. So when it comes to light bow guns, all around they are a fantastic weapon. You have tons of mobility, you have tons of damage, and this light bow gun build in particular I found to be extremely effective at all the content of the game. I can solo every single one of the Elder Dragons with it. I can go on multiplayer hunts and destroy whatever I'm fighting with it. It does tons of damage. It has high mobility. And while you could be a little bit more specialized picking up something like a water or a fire bow gun, at the end of the day, this build is so powerful that I feel it even outclasses specialized builds. Now, if you're already familiar with the Monster Hunter franchise, you may remember Slicing Ammo, which in the previous iterations wasn't all that strong, and that changed drastically in Monster Hunter World. Slicing Ammo is hands down the best ammo in the game, doing tons of damage. So to better elaborate on what I'm talking about here, if we take Normal Ammo 3, as you can see, we have a reticle here that's going to determine our damage. This is kind of the sweet spot right now, so we're hitting 35 a shot. And now we back up, you can see that inner circle is gone, and we're hitting nothing. We're hitting 3. You know, we're basically whiffing. Um, similarly, if we're right up on the monster, we get less as well. So basically there's this, this sweet spot. Uh, for starters, that sweet spot doesn't matter with slicing ammo. You could be all the way back here. Slicing ammo, don't care. Slicing ammo is going to do work. And the way slicing ammo works in particular is it's going to do an initial hit that'll usually go in for about one or two damage. And then following that, there's going to be seven follow-up hits. And with my particular setup, each of those hits is going to do 13 damage. So as you can imagine, this adds up to tons and tons and tons of DPS over time. In particular, just doing one slicing ammo shot with this setup is doing 92 damage. And you can put out three of these in rapid succession, sometimes four, sometimes five. So even if we don't get any procs, which we'll go into in just a second, we're looking at close to 300 damage coming out, which is immense. So moving on to the build itself and what makes this so effective, let's look at the equipment. The first thing we have is the Gulagoth's Whale. Now this is the light bow gun you get going down the Valhazak tree. And the main reason we're going to go for this bow gun is it has 260 attack, which is one of the highest attacks of light bow guns. And most importantly, we have slicing ammo at 3 for our capacity. Now to pull off the slicing ammo at 3, one of the things we're going to have to have is the uh, ammo up. We're going to have to have that up to level 3, which we do. And this is the only light bow gun that can have slicing ammo at 3, and that's what makes this so powerful. On top of that, we also have 3 shots of dragon ammo, which is incredibly potent against bosses. And then on top of that, we can use things like pierce 3, spread 3, which are just nice to have. Uh, we have a lot of the utility type stuff. We have poison, we have paralysis, we have sleep, we have exhaust, we have trank if we want to go hunting. So all in all, it's a solid gun when it comes to the ammo types but like I said the big thing here is going to be the slicing ammo uh, moving on from there this is a mixed set which is why I look like such an abomination and end game in Monster Hunter World basically when it comes to optimization just about everything you do is going to be a mixed set so the big thing here is going to be three pieces of the Xeno set in particular we have the head the claws and the legs now you're going to want these three pieces in particular because the chest and the foot pieces, they have a different skill on them that's made to amplify the damage of uh, certain melee weapons. Whereas on the spines, we have special ammo boost on the legs right there. And then on the head, we also have special ammo boost. And what special ammo boost is going to do is it's going to increase the power of our bowgun special ammo, in this case the Weverm Blast, by 20%. And while that's nice, the more important reason that we're going for three piece of Xeno is for Xeno Jiva's Divinity. For bows and bowguns, shots have a chance not to expend coatings or ammo. And what this comes down to is when this proc goes up, you can basically continually fire. I've seen as many as six slicing ammo shots go out before having to reload. And if you're not having to reload, that is a massive amount of damage you're putting out. Kind of on that note, that's why we also have three reload assists. Now you can do whatever you want, but I would suggest going for three reload assist mods. The reason for this is when you have three reload assist mods, it'll take our reload speed from slicing from average up to fast, which means we can dump out that slicing ammo as fast as possible, which is what we want. That's where our damage is going to come from. It's going to be slicing, 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 slicing. You can see right there we had uh, we had that proc. We got four shots out there. Let's see just how many, how, like, look at this. This is silly. And this isn't even utilizing our Weverm Blast at all. 
So moving, oh, wrong button. Moving back on into the rest of the equipment. Um, the other skills we get out of this, it's not necessary, but it is nice to have. We have flinch free on there. Uh, so having that up at level 2 is going to make it so that we prevent knockback and tripping just becomes a basic knockback. And then, of course, picking up the, uh, having the claws, we're going to have critical boost, which unfortunately does kind of go to waste, but there is a way to work that into this build, which I'll explain a little bit later. As for our other two pieces, we're going to want the Kirin leg guards, the B version in particular, because it'll give us two gem slots. And as you can see, we have uh, the ammo up on there, and then you're going to want the death stench chest, in particular the A version, because that will also have have free element up. Now instead of doing this, the other alternative you could do is run a element up charm, but unfortunately the charms can only have two levels, so you would still have to run the chest or alternatively run the Kirin legs, at which point you're wasting a potential skill slot. So all in all, I found this to be the most effective loadout when it came to gear. So in total, looking at all of our skills here, we have the uh, Xenojiva Divinity, which is going to give us a chance to not have to expend ammo. Our necklace, we have Attack Boost 3. Now, the reason we're going to go for Attack Boost 3 is slicing is going to scale off of your base attack damage. The higher your attack damage is, the higher slicing is going to be because it's a small percentage of your attack. Now, ideally, what you'd want to do with this build is get attack gems, but attack gems are incredibly rare. But as you find attack gems and you slot those, you could take this all the way up to level 7, giving you 21% at, or, excuse me, 21 attack and a 5% affinity chance, which would be a ton of extra damage coming in. Right now, as we don't have attack, I have three different defensive gems currently in my gear. Uh, you can really roll with whatever you want. I just roll defensive because you know I don't have anything else really worth using. But if you're having trouble against a particular boss, feel free to slot in uh, resistances to whatever element you may be having trouble with. Of course, we have ammo up at level 3, which is going to expand the clip size for just about every ammo in the gun. That's why we have dragon and slicing at 3 capacity. Blight resistance at 2 is just part of what we get from having some of the Xeno gear, and that's kind of nice. Uh, it'll basically reduce blights by quite a bit. That 60% is, is really significant. Obviously, our special ammo boost and flinch free, as I mentioned. Uh, critical boost, which unfortunately we're not going to be taking advantage of. But as I mentioned, the chest and the legs for Xeno wouldn't have really helped us at all. And then of course, we have a point of fortify on there. So all in all, that's going to be the gear loadout for this build. Um, if you have any questions about it, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. As for the general play style of it, it's very, very simple. It's going to be slicing ammo spam on the enemy, and then alternatively, when it comes time to use our Weavern Blasts, we're going to go for, uh, where is it at, spread ammo 1. And what you would do is, once you knock the enemy down via your slicing ammo, you drop three Weavern Blasts on its face, and then proceed to do this. As you can see, that's just enough that it's going to run through all of our weapon blasts. It's going to be a massive amount of upfront damage while the enemy is stunned. And then as soon as that's done, we work back into our slicing. Aside from that, if we're fighting particularly long enemies, such as Xenojiva, Pierce Ammo 1 and 3 both work in splendidly there. Uh, against stuff like Xenojiva or Near Gigante, Dragon Ammo, obviously fantastic. And I want to point out that this Dragon Ammo, you don't use it because it's the Dragon Element, although it is. It's because it's Elder Seal imbued ammo, so that's going to help us to reduce the abilities of the Elder Dragons as we're fighting them. And then obviously all your other ammo types, stuff like Exhaust or Demon or Sticky or Poison or whatever the case is, you have, you have a... You know, obviously niche uses in which you would use those types of shots, but they aren't a main part of the playstyle for this build. So either way, let's jump into a hunt. We're going to be knocking out an Elder Dragon with this build to show you just how fast it is. So for our hunt, we're going to be going after a Kirin. If you've never seen Kirin before, obviously, uh, spoilers ahead, he is an Elder Dragon. And he's basically a big old lightning unicorn. Uh, and interestingly enough, the whole reason that I really got into the light bow gun was largely because of Kieran. Uh, he has a lightning aura that's constantly around him that makes him a huge pain to deal with as a melee class. And I was having so much trouble, I was like, screw it, pulling out my light bow gun, whooping his ass, and did it ever whoop his ass. So, anyway, uh, we obviously took some uh, human drug there as well as the armor skin. Uh, these are items you should just be taking by default anytime you're getting ready to do a hunt. Uh, they'll help to boost your attack and your defense, and as opposed to some of the other stuff, Demon Drug and the Armor Skin will last the entirety of the hunt, whereas some of the other buffing items, they, they last for a shortened amount of time. Where is he hiding? Where is that?
can never find his fur to grab it just because it's so light it like doesn't show up very well here we go we got some footprints and he is right down below um, so the only real things you're going to need 100% to bring along for this are going to be slash berries at 60, you're going to want a far caster, and then you're going to want your 30 slicing ammo. Now the main reason we're getting these slash berries is because we're constantly going to be refilling, and then of course we also have the, uh, the slash, excuse me, the uh, far caster, because if we have to go back, we want to be able to go back and get the stuff that we need real fast. So, now that we got that, pop over to slicing, and we start doing work. Like I said, very, very easy build. Um, you know, I, I feel kind of bad killing Kieran with this, because he just, you know, it feels more like you're, you're beating a horse than actually hunting a beast. And he doesn't really get a chance to, like, fight back at all. Where are you going? Get back here. No. Now, as you can see, we do have uh, more Weapon Blast already. At this point, if you want to, feel free to go in with your Weapon Blast and place it. Personally, uh, against stuff like this where it's uh, you know a smaller enemy, I like to wait until I have all three grouped up just for more damage all around. But you can always drop one and then start doing it, but I just find it more efficient to drop three at once. So now that we're out, crafting list, slicing ammo, hit Y, select all, 30. Now we are back to 30 shots. So basically you get 90 shots total. Um, very few enemies. I actually haven't found an enemy that'll survive all 90 shots uh, on single play. If you're playing with friends, sometimes 90 won't be enough. But, you know, you do have other shots, obviously. Against something like Kieran, slicing is going to be my best bet here. Um, against a lot of the bigger monsters, obviously, you know, I'll be working and stuff like Pierce. But Kieran being relatively small, uh, Pierce is going to be wasted against him. And while I could use spread ammo quite easily here, the big problem with spread ammo, of course, is that I have to get close enough to him that I'm risking hitting all lightning. So, we already got the horn broken. I will say outright, you know, this is definitely not the, uh, it's not the most involved build. <laughs> He's almost dead, so we're going to go on and finish this. But it is a very high DPS build. And there we go. Kieran, dead. Dead, done, taken out. So, you know, as I said, back at the uh, the overview, you know, the basic idea here is to just continually hit the target with slicing ammo, uh, drop your Weaven Blast, and then go in with a little bit of the spread shot. Um, and back at the start of the video, I obviously mentioned that there you could do a crit variant. Um, if you wanted to do a more affinity route, um, obviously for one, you're going to need to get some affinity gems, or alternatively, you could run a necklace that would boost your affinity, doing something like maximum might or something along those lines. But to be honest, I found that unless you're at uh, roughly 30% affinity or higher, you're going to be better off doing the attack gem. But we, of course, do have the critical boost on our gloves. So it is something to look into. I think it really gonna, it's going to come down to whether or not uh, affinity gems are something that are commonly found in the future as we begin to play and get to higher and higher levels of hunter rank But either way, that's the build guys all there is to it You know basically just pump something full of slicing ammo with a uh, good chance not to use up your shots and Just take it on down. So either way. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video as I mentioned If you have any questions or comments drop them on down below and we will see you guys next time with our next Monster Hunter World build showcase